Well, it's also what? You see? The tongue, so you can liken your tongue to fire. Mm -hmm. Read. A world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole person. Mm. Sets the whole course of his life on fire. And is itself set on fire by hell. Mm. So, what can tongue, our tongue do to us? According to this portion of the scripture we are reading. Can it can destroy us. It's like a fire. It can destroy us. So if your life is going to be destroyed, it is not going to be destroyed because of the witches around you. It is going to be destroyed because of the things you use your tongue to say. Is that correct? So I have a question here. What about if that thing I am going to <coughs> this is real? That thing I'm going to is real, is physically present. Yeah, it is physically present. But mm. the Bible says, even though we are weak, mm. let us say we are strong. Oh. It's not boasting. It's not. It's not. Boasting. It's not. It's that not is trying to. It's, it's, a, it's, an act of, it's an act of faith. Mm. It's an act of faith. Somebody who says, you are not realistic. The thing is, you are poor. You are boasting that you are rich. So you are poor, but you are out there portrayed to be uh, rich. You are not being real. You are not being up not, to speed not, when not that, not that that true. If if you are if you are poor and you are proclaiming that you are rich, mm. not that you don't, you don't just as a Christian, you don't just stand on the street or among the uh, uh, rumor mongers and then. Mm. Say yes, I am rich. I am rich. Mm -hmm. That one is boasting. Mm -hmm. But you st you stand on the word of God. If even people regard you as a poor, you yourself confess to yourself that though the people are these people are saying I am poor, but in God mm -hmm. I am not poor. <coughs> you confess positive way. You said you said that you just explain and narrate mm -hmm. uh, that where there is faith, mm -hmm. there is no fear. Mm -hmm. And as soon as fear comes in. There is no faith. There is no faith. So, uh, if I am confessing that I am, I, I, I am, I'm not, I'm not, even though I'm weak, but I am strong. Then, because of the faith that I have, I will stand on the word of God and then do what I have to do. Okay. I mean, that's all that. I had wanted to simplify it as mm -hmm. you were saying. It's not that you are going to say the opposite, mm -hmm. but rather you have believed the word. Mm -hmm. So quickly, it's not what you want to say, but what you know that you are going, it's going to come out. Mm -hmm. What you know that it's coming out. Like, as you are saying, I remember this um, popular musician use it to illustrate his music. Um, the Sonny Bedu. He, he says when he was a child in Kumasi, they sent him for school fees. But before he goes home and tell the mother, instead of the mother to say, the mother don't have the money. Instead of the mother to say something, the mother will by faith says, you will go and pay, I will give you the money and go and pay. But there is no money at all. Before, by what the mother is standing on, Within no time, somebody will come and say, Auntie Susan, so, -and so we owe you this money, but we have even forgotten. So something says we should bring it to you now. And they take it. So you can't just say the opposite, but rather you know the what you know what you have believed and you are relying on. And that comes out. And then another worst one also is uh, the man who also composed the uh, it's well with my soul, whatever that comes my way. When you listen to his illustration, going to U.S. to set up factories and everything, it all bends. Yeah. You are back to nothing. You have no money. You say, your, your wife says, okay, let me go back to U.K. with the children and see if we can also do something to support. They also die on the way. But when you hear it, 
Sometimes you say what has come on me, but you, if you know some words that has filled you, then you start to say, it is well. The people will say, it is not well. But you know why you are saying that. Because if you don't have a bank, it's like, as they say, your father is there, they will come and tell you, hey, what do I do? But the person who has put in money in his account will not worry, will not be disturbed like you. Oh, so you said he is dead. So have you put him to hospital? What? He knows something that is behind that is going to cushion him. Likewise, this thing. It's not that we are just saying that it is well. We know whom we are relying on. We know our provider. That is why. We are not just saying the opposite that I am sick and I'm not saying I am. Because you know you've been healed already. So it's a temporal thing. Is that correct? Or any other more, any other more additions? People will say, but you are not being realistic. You are not. Your wife will tell you. They, they have the right to say. They don't see what they don't see what you see. Don't call it a, I mean, an instrument used to collect the sound. We need to call it a There's no money. Then you say it is well. God is provided. My provider. You see, uh, Sarah, Sarah asked Abraham, well, since when did you, since what, when was the last time you heard of your God? They say, yeah, I heard of him. He said, he is my exceedingly greatness, great reward. And, uh, and Sarah was smart. He don't want to hear that anymore. Because this prophecy came long time ago, 25 years now. We are not seeing anything. But Abraham knew whom in whom he has believed. So, by seeing the opposite, it's not enough. By you yourself, should be well endowed with the word of God so much so that you believe that it doesn't matter what your God reigns and he will reign. It's not what you say but what you believe in. If you say it and you don't have any faith in it, it does not work. But if you believe it, then it will work for you. Let's move on. All kinds of animals birds, reptiles, and creatures of the sea are being tamed and have been tamed by man. As no man can tame the town, mm -hmm. it is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. Verse 5. <laughs> it says every, every animal has been what? Tamed. tamed. If you say tamed, what does it mean? Can be improved. Um, has been. To, to, to order. Mm -hmm. Have been suppressed, has been has been controlled, quarantine has been, I mean, yeah, but the tongue is not saying you should try, you say, but no one, <laughs> definite, it's, it, say, it didn't say it's a suggestion, it's telling us, but as for the animals, you can tame them, but as for the tongue, it's not tameable. So it means that our tongue it's very good and it could be very dangerous element in our life. It could be very good using it to say the negative uh, the positive things. It could be very good. But if you don't take care, that same good thing will be a source of your distraction. And it's not something that is easy to be able to submit yourself or break your tongue under under. Control means that you should every time be ready to study and to know and to believe the word of God so that when you see the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaking. So your tongue will only be picking from what is you in have put in inside. inside. So if at the end of the day your tongue realizes that there is a situation of which you don't have anything stored in there. Then it will come up quickly to see what it wants. And that could be the, the beginning of your distraction. The tongue is like a dog in your house. When you give the dog food, as soon as anybody enters the house, the dog, the dog does not misbehave. But if you forget to give the dog food, as soon as somebody even you respect enters the house, because the dog, the, the dog is hungry, he needs food, he doesn't have food, it comes up quickly and bites the person. 
brings shame and disgrace to you. So we need to be able to feed ourselves with the word of God so that any time our tongue will be speaking, it shall not be speaking a worldly thing. It shall be speaking a word which is powerful and has the power and the tendency to change negative things that we see. So if at the end of the day, you don't have anything in you, your tongue will be speaking according to the things it wants to say. So we as a believers, we need to always be studying the word of God. So that as soon as problem meets us on the road, then God will feed us with a word. You know, God will not force the word of God in you. Unless you study, you will not know. If you don't study the word of God, you wouldn't even know that God has said this. And it's about time we study the word of God. So that whatever situation we go through, there will be a solution in the word of God to help us come out of it. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm. Read. With Verse 9. 9, okay. With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father. Mm, and with it we curse men mm-hmm. who have been made in God's likeness. What is the difference? What is the difference here? With our tongue we praise God. And with our tongue, we don't curse God. We curse man. And look at the way he has said it. We curse men whom God has made in his own likeness. It means that at the end of the day, any curse you curse a man is God indirectly. Are you, are you getting it? Are you getting the scenario here? He says, with our mouth, we used to bless God. And with the same mouth, with the same tongue, we, we, we curse men. Now, what does this word curse here mean? Think about it. What Con- does this condemn. Mean? We destroy. Destroy. Condemn. Chastise. We abuse. Oh, even when you do, when you look down upon somebody, when you look down upon somebody, maybe based on the person's appearance or nature or the way the person has dressed, you look down upon that person. It's not the person you are looking down upon, but it is God. So we need to be very careful that things we do, that's why the Bible says, if somebody says he loves God and hates his fellow human being, he's a liar. So Christianity is all about what you do for your neighbor. It's not what you do for God. Because we do things for God through our neighbors. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. So whatever you do to bring a smile into the life of your neighbor, you are doing it for God. Whatever you do to hurt your neighbor, it's not that person you are doing it against. It's God you are doing it against. You see, when when Potiphar's wife cast his eye, her eye on Joseph and said, Let's do it, let's do it. Joseph said, How can I do such a wickedness against my God? But that wickedness, wickedness was against Potiphar, the master. But Joseph now went further and said, how can I do such a wickedness against my God? Because Joseph had an understanding that anything negative you do against your neighbor, it is not that person you are doing it against, but it is against God you are sinning against. So, let us be very careful the way we treat ourselves. Sometimes we look at somebody, the way the person's appearance, the way the person is talking, the way the person is behaving, and you just look down upon that person. It's not good. It's a curse. You are cursing the person. Curse here does not only mean that you are cursing the person. Or no, 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 no. Anything you do to bring down somebody, you are doing it against the Lord. Ten. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers, you should not be. Can hold fresh water and salt. Water flow from the same spring. Mm-hmm. My brothers, can a fig tree bear olives, or a grape vine bear figs? Neither can a salt a salt spring produce fresh water. 
What, what, what is the distinction he's trying to bring here? He's always using two things. Try, try, try something. He's trying to mm -hmm. say you should be one. You can't be all. Mm -hmm. If you want to be good, be good. If you don't want to be godly or you want to be of the world, you can be of the world. And as he's comparing the source of water, for instance, mm -hmm. then practically you yourself, he says, if you know things that you are not qualified as a Christian to say, no matter whatever comes, mm -hmm. you are no, not qualified. That those are not your portion, mm -hmm. and what it's your portion to say. And there is a clear illustration. I think uh, when Absalom died, mm -hmm. somebody volunteered to go and then uh, deliver the message, mm -hmm. but. Jonathan said, you are not the one that have to take the message today. Mm -hmm. And he was forcing that I will run. It's like, people are, are supposed to be known for what they are. Mm -hmm. They are supposed to be known for what they are. Not that today you are lukewarm. If you want to be warm, warm. If you want to be um, cold, cold. Look at verse 12. It says, um, a fig tree cannot produce olive. olive. That means what? That means what in our life? In what our life. That is what is in us that comes out. That comes out. Mm. So if we use, if we are evil, there's evil in our, our life, and uh, we use our life to condemn. Whenever we speak, this is what will come out. Mm -hmm. The case is, it is, it is that, that will come out. You, you can't be saying that you use that, like in the, in the uh, previous chapter, he said, with the same mouth, with the same tongue, we used we to praise God, God, and the same tongue we used to curse. Is so, it good? It is not good. That is what good. must be the proper thing? The proper thing is to Choose one. Choose is to, is to use your uh -huh. Choose one. So which no. of them do we have to choose? No. Is it a choice? No. Is it something it's, 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 no. A no, it is not you know you don't have to choose one, but mm -hmm. what I'm saying what I'm saying that we must endeavor mm -hmm. to like I was I was referring to mm -hmm. um Matthew chapter five or so mm -hmm. where Jesus Christ when he began his teachings and he said we've been saying that if you even if you say to like a common person if you look down on somebody you say yeah, like Raka. Yeah. If you say Raka, you will be guilty. Mm -hmm. That means a creature in God's image, you saying you calling that person a common thing. Mm -hmm. Useless. Useless. Yeah. So we should not allow any filthy words come out of our mouth. Because we've born, we've, we have we are created by God and we have been redeemed. And the blood of Jesus Christ has changed us. If we are of God, then Things that must come out of our mouth must be of what? God, a godly nature. And it is by only through salvation that our tongue can be taken. Mm. So, can a fig tree, tree bear olive fruit? No. Why? A fig tree bear fig, uh, fruits. Mm. And olive fruits, olive tree bear olive uh, tree. Or bear olives. Olives. Yeah. Fig tree bear. cannot bear olive fruits. Fruit. So if you are a fig, mm -hmm. then what must come out of you must be the fig. Uh, is, it, is it what he started with? He said, with the same tongue we bless God and the same tongue we curse people. At this point, it means that a fig tree. Is Only. Only. Um, can, can I use some, I don't know how to <laughs> really say, but it's practical anyway. Mm -hmm. One man of God was asking that, um, are you using your mind or your mind is using, using you? you. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. Here, I will try to say, we don't know who we are. We've not decided that we are going to be a fig tree or an olive tree. Mm -hmm. If we decide, then 
we will be um, committed that this is what we've decided to be, then we will not bring out today olive, tomorrow, tomorrow fig. Fig tree. Anytime, anytime, anytime. It's a, a decision you have to make that anytime. today I'm a tomato. Mm-hmm. So if I'm tomato, then I'm supposed to produce tomatoes, not mangoes. Time to but if you don't, don't, don't can't tomato identify tomato yourself. Tree, according to example, any time tomato tree bears purpose, <laughs> then miracle has happened. Okay. okay. So you see how Christians every day we perform miracle. If we're a Christian, we express, you are expected to bless God with your mouth. But this same mouth we use to bless God is the same mouth we used to curse others. It's the same map we used to insult others. That is the miracle Christians perform every day. But, but he, no, the, the, only, the only thing... I gave somebody order for a telephone. I climbed to the telephone and then gave the telephone to the, the woman. Mm-hmm. And then as soon as he hold the telephone, he said, Vasistas, what is this? Telephone. So immediately my anger was to say, did I be, did I order it? <laughs> the content in it, you ordered it. You must know the all what you ordered. I am to deliver. What I see here is only a brand form. And your name is on it. I have to bring it to you. So you're asking me, what is this? Can I tell you? So the woman signed, and when I was going. Something to something ask me, reflect on what you said, your, your actions over there. No, I said I turned out and say, I told the woman, the lady, sorry the way I spoke to you. You went what? back to her. I was not I was not even uh, 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 out of, of, of her side. So I said, sorry the way I spoke to you. He said, You see God. So immediately when I said when I was telling something told me that reflect on what you said. Your action then. Immediately, well, because I, I ran to the third floor, mm-hmm. and then when I gave him sign and let me go, he said, Pass, pass. <laughs> I have to get riches. <laughs> but, but anyway, I, I, I did something about a month ago, <laughs> which was not good. Mm-hmm. But I deliberately did it. Too bad. Um, that's where it's coming in. When you are with a group, at least for them to understand you, you also try to speak their language so that they can understand you. Because if you speak your language, in when I, I speak tree and I'm with people who speak English, when I speak tree, they don't understand. I have to force to, if I want them to understand, I have to speak their language. And I, I know that this language that I'm speaking is not good, but for them to understand, I have to also talk their way. That's a miracle. Anytime a Christian begins to behave in a different way that is not expected of a Christian, it's in the sight of God, it's a miracle. God wonders, how come my children, my own children, have been using this word? Pastor, I've fought with it myself for about all these months. Even yesterday, till today and today, I've been fighting over it. But it's like, when you speak your language, they don't understand. You see what the problem lies? You see what your problem is? You see, the Bible says, the Bible says, be careful the way you answer a fool. Else, you become a fool. fool. That is what you see, so, sometimes, in speaking other people's language, you, you become them. Like, yeah, you, become, you become like that. And people will, people will be looking at you and say, ah, oh, you of all people, you speak this language too. You see, but everything you should know how to handle it. Everything has gotten the way to handle it. There are certain things you 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 you, you take if you can use, if you want to use every moment to correct something you will destroy almost everything in your life. So let us let us let us understand what is important here is that the math we use to bless God that math should always be doing the right thing. It shouldn't be using it for any other thing that will make us be performing miracles. When you see a Christian standing outside insulted, that Christian is performing a miracle because a fig tree is now bearing olive, olive branch, which is 
only a miracle. It can never happen. How can a dog give birth to an elephant? It's only in Christianity that the way we are supposed to behave, we can sometimes behave this and also behave that way at the same time. That's why some people see Christianity as a religion, which I doubt is not true. It's not Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is not an act. Christianity is a practice. Christianity is not something you can learn. Christianity is a behavior. It's not a, a, man, a state manage. Like you are going on the church, you put on a different attitude. When we close from church, you have a different attitude. We when you do that, church and come back. yeah. When you do that, then it's, that is a religion. You have been religious. You are not a Christian. When you do that, you are a religious person. You are not a Christian. Because Christianity affects your life. It brings changes in your life. It doesn't manage your life. Like, when I'm going to church, and even um, you insult me, I'm cool. But as soon as I close and come, I'm a tiger. I will fight you till, you know. When you do that, it's like you are playing a role in the church. When you come to church, you are playing a role. It's like you are on a stage performing an act. When you are on the stage, you have a different role you play. When you come home, you are different. It's like these Ghanaian movies. Some of them, the way they behave when the camera is on them, it's not the same way they behave when they are home. You see? So, the same way Christians too nowadays have become. When they come to church, they have a different lifestyle altogether. When they go home, they manage a different lifestyle. When you do that, you are being religious. You are not a Christian. Let's move on. Is it at 10 now? 10? 13. 13. Who is wise and understanding among you? Mm. Let him show it by his good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. Read it again. Read the verse again. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show it by his good life. By deeds, that in the humility that stands from wisdom. Okay, now there are some powerful things he has used. Let's try to understand them one by one. What is, if you say somebody is wise, who is he? Wise, he's a wise man. It, it means one who can bridle his own town. Mm -hmm. He's a wise man. It means somebody who can read it in his own tongue is a wise man. Okay, let's go further. It then. means you portray, they see wisdom in you. They see wisdom in, in you, you, then you are wise. They see wisdom in yeah, you. If what you, is wisdom? Wisdom is of um, the best of quality of acting. The best of quality in, of acting. Yeah. That is not wisdom. Wisdom. Is the ability to, I mean, use your knowledge, the knowledge you have. Wisdom is the ability to use it profitably or in a godly manner. Wisdom is the ability to use the knowledge you have acquired in a godly manner. So, anytime somebody has, you know, there are some people who are knowledgeable, but they are fools. Yes. They are brilliant, but the knowledge they have, they don't use it in a very productive manner. So that is foolish, foolish knowledge. But wisdom, when you have knowledge, you pray to God, how do I use this knowledge? Then God will give you the guidelines. And that is wisdom. That is wisdom. So whenever you apply wisdom, then you become a wise person. You see, King Solomon used wisdom to judge two, two women. And from that time, they started calling him a wise king. A wise king, because he applied wisdom. He said, okay, bring, bring a knife, let me kill this baby. That was wisdom. And then one woman said, kill it, king. And one woman said, no, leave it. Then the king applied wisdom and said, her probabilities, the child may belong to this woman. Not. So whenever you apply knowledge, intelligently in a godly manner you become wise and what is understanding what is understanding 
can I say its ability to, to agree to what it's being said? Mm -hmm. Understanding. Yeah, you have given us the literal, but you said this man has understanding. Um, you have understanding. You have understanding of Christianity. Let's look at it in the broad sense. One with an insight, mm -hmm. having insight, uh, insight and foresight about what you are doing. Mm -hmm. Having insight or foresight about what you are doing. This Christianity, this, 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 we are coming to church. We are coming to Bible studies. What is your understanding? Why are you here? Do you have insight? Do you have foresight? Why are you here? Why shouldn't you be here? If you have understanding, that, that's where you make all these decisions. Why should I go? Because when I go, it will help me to become a better person tomorrow. It means that when you have an understanding, you, 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 you always see the bigger picture of your life, not the, 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 the immediate of your life. You always see the things ahead. So, let's read, let's read the 13 again. Who is a wise man? And, and, and how we have tried to, we have tried to um, define who a wise person is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who is a wise man? And endure with knowledge among you. So you can never be wise without knowledge. You can never be wise without knowledge. If you don't have knowledge, there's no way you can be wise. But having knowledge does not make you wise. When you have knowledge, knowledge is the acquisition of information. Now, when you read the Bible, you are acquiring knowledge. And now when you pray to God, how do I use this knowledge? Then you use it in the godly way, then it, it becomes wisdom, then you are wise. So now we know who a wise person is. A wise person is somebody who has information and has relied on God to use the information to, in a godly manner. Mm -hmm. Let's read on. Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. Every wise person speaks with weakness and with wisdom. Sometimes you see so many people arguing and talking. The one that is not making sense will be shouting. Because people that are shouting always think that the more you shout, the more you make you make you make you make a point. But shouting does not make you better person. You can talk slow and still make a point. That's why every time I will tell husband and wife, it's not about shouting, but it's about making the point. You can be simple, but still be strong. Sometimes people want to shout and talk hard so that we know that, yeah, they are strong. No, you can be very soft and still make your point. Be very strong. So, wisdom is not false. It's about the things you know and using them well. And if you are a wise person, you, wisdom always go with meekness. Sometimes some people think that when you are meek, you are weak. But meekness is no weakness. I may be meek, but I'm, I refuse to be weak. Sometimes some people think that you, the fact that, you see, some people will say, don't take my lenient my leniency to be my weakness. The fact that somebody is lenient does not mean that the person is weak. There's a difference. You can shout. Sometimes people that shout are the weak people. They shout da, 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 five minutes. They come back and realize that in fact everything I did, I was wrong. If that apologized. See? So let's bear that. 14. That's but if you have all bitter, but if you have all bitter envy and selfish ambitions in your heart, do not boast about it or deny the truth. <laughs> if you have all what? Bitter. Mm -hmm. I did not say this is bitter jealousy. Bitter and envy. No, they are not they the same. What well, what if they are not the same, then give me the difference. What is bitterness? Bitterness. Bitterness is 
harboring, uh -huh. uh, harboring an offense uh -huh. without altering it. Mm -hmm. Harboring an offense without altering it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's go there. Bit, bit. Yeah. What is bitterness? Harboring an offense. Somebody offended you. Are uh, bitter people always offended? You see, sometimes some people can be bitter about you, but you have not offended them. Some people are bitter about you just because of the way you are, just because of the way you carry yourself. Bitterness is the fact, an evil spirit. Bitterness can stem, can stem from enviness. Do you know that? And some envy can come from anywhere. There are some people who envy you not because you have offended them. They envy you because of the car you are using. They envy you because of your state of the Pastor, no one envies with offense. O offense is different root altogether. Uh -huh. Envy is like wishing to have what you have, but he can't have he it. He can't have it. Yeah, and it's bitterness which comes Which produces offense. that. Yeah. One produces the other. We, we have learned that there is a godly envy. Uh -huh. As for, as for godly envy, that's, 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 that's positive. Yes. That's positive. But this, we are on the negatives. It is bitterness that produces envy. When you become bitter, then you envy. So the bitter will come where, why was it not me? Me, but other person. Then the bitter starts the taking over. Of bitterness. It could stem from sources of bitterness. Why me? Why not me? Hmm. That's the question. Why not me? When you say why me, then why? it's not That's right. bitter anymore. Why, why, why not, not me? me? Okay, why not me? And when you are bitter, <laughs> you... why not me is envy. Uh huh. No, it's, then saying? that starts yeah. with the bitter comes in. Why not me? Why me not me? Then an action, action is coming. Action is coming. It means you envy some. Why not me? Why not me? Somebody has this. Why then not the me? the negative conclusions are coming. But you know, Wait and see. it always starts from one. One begins and triggers to the another. Why not me? Then envy has come. Okay, it all begins with envy. When, when Cain and Abel went to sacrifice to God, they all did it. God accepted which one? Abel's yes. own. As soon as Abel's own was accepted, his brother became envious of him. And that envy produced bitterness. And that bitterness led to him killing his brother. You see, that's why envy, we don't, by Bible so we should envy no one. Because it it's all begins with envy. You don't have to envy anybody. Sometimes the people we see them and we are tempted to envy them, we have only seen them on the side of their life. We have not seen them on the other side of their life. When we combine the totality of their life, maybe when they give me whatever they have for you, free, you will not take it. So envy no one, says the Bible. When you are able to live this life, you will see that many times you will be able to overcome bitterness. I think in this passage, as we are coming as at this level, there are two strong words. Um, uses um, mm -hmm. praising God and then cursing. Mm -hmm. When we go up and start from there and see that whoever is around us, it's also God mm -hmm. in a form. Yeah. Then we won't even come down to this level. We can tolerate it. Mm -hmm. We won't envy ourselves. We won't envy bitter, whichever that we want to use. First of all, if you know God, it's everything. Mm -hmm. God, it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. We are all in the image of God. As it's saying, can you praise God? Is it not the same how you are? Praising God, and you are also cursing man. Mm. But if you see that God is man, then if you can do it and He is doing it, 
you will still be happy. Glory be to God. It's just people who have the mind of Christ that will see that they are not able to do, but their brother has been able to do. If, look at Cain and Abel, if both of you from the same mother has gone to sacrifice to God and one has accepted and one didn't, the blessing is coming to the same family. And it then, was not going to anywhere. It was coming to the same family. Yet, even yeah. from the same family, they yeah. said, uh, Pastor, you see, mm -hmm. at times too, this one, the like, after Cain and Abel, mm -hmm. let's, let, let, let's, mm -hmm. let, 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 let's see it from a different angle. Mm -hmm. At times, you see, uh, a woman made, made a comment about me and my brother. Mm -hmm. See? And if I am not careful, Bless I would have begun to what? envy my brother. Why? Because now my brother is what? Mm -hmm. Moving. Man. Moving. He's, he's, yeah. he's, he's in charge of a, a, a church. A church. Mm -hmm. And he has a congregation. That's right. So this woman, her comment, I don't want to bring everything here. The comment that she made. You see, as soon as I thought, so this one, this one, uh, at times you, the envy comes from the people around us. You see, so from the that is the sources of envy. It can, it can come, it can come from anybody. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, when it overtakes you, you don't blame anybody. You see, they are the sources of envy. That's why when the woman said it, you need to have something in you to be able to neutralize everything he said. And remember, everywhere people say, it carries a spirit. Every word that people say on you, it has a spirit. Sometimes, when somebody says something to you, that time it does not work. But when you go and you sit alone, then that word will now begin to work on you. That's why it's not everybody you, you listen to. There are some people you need to switch off from hearing them. Because every word that people release, Jesus said, the word that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So, every word you are hearing, you need to be very careful. At the end of the day, you become what you hear. You always become what you hear. In other words, in other words the way people will make a comment, mm -hmm. and uh, in the course of it, it can lead you to envy someone. Envy someone straight. The way you... you, you, you uh, Poor... But, but thank, thank God, as you are saying, thank God Jesus himself illustrated this at the beginning for us mm. by saying, when it says, do this, I will give you this. It says, it is written that man shall not live on bread alone. Or Do, do you get the picture now? So, as the woman tells you, you and your brother, what is inside you now is going to fuel what you've heard. Mm -hmm. And what have you had inside you? If it is the word, at least as Pastor used the, the, the um, King Solomon as an example. You see, the child, the woman, the one with the, with the true child, the one that the child is not dead, says, Oh, no, don't. When he grows, we all can sin. Then you see that passion will come. If you are godly, as he says, oh, at least we are all one. Or even if it's not my brother, we are all Ghanaian. Or we are all Africans. No matter how you look it. But you were able to do it because of what you've put in inside you. I also, I also told someone that... That's the word. Yeah. If from that time, my children were going there. Was, is going, were going there. So I could have stopped saying that if this is what the woman is saying, then today, and then. No one will go there. But I just said, yeah, I wish that my brother, I wish I went for that my brother will succeed, will succeed in, the ministry, yeah. in the ministry. So, because while my children, we are all at home, I asked them to go there, go and support your father. That's all. So, at that time, I should have said that this is the end. I don't want to see anybody. You see, in as for envy, people can provoke you to envy. David and Saul, they were good. Mm -hmm. They were good. 
until the women in that community started singing and said, <laughs> a thousand, 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 a